again. This is the fourth part of our previous video tutorial. This part will be devoted to matrices. The situation with matrices is quite similar, like with vectors. Create the matrix, uh, set the layout, but now you have the two-dimensional layout. You set the type of the matrix, which can be, for example, parallel sparse. But in case of matrices, you have to, or you should, to have an efficient code call routine like this that sets the preallocation of the sparse matrix. For details of preallocation, please see the Petsy manual. You can also uh, set the properties of matrix from command line and uh, in the end when you don't want it anymore you can call mat destroy. Again, in case of sequential alternative you use petsicum self as a communicator and you set the local and global sizes to the same numbers. And again, you can call all in one using this countable function matcreate mpi aij where you create set the layout set the type and preallocate in one call there are several basic matrix types like sparse matrix types or blocked sparse matrix types or dense matrix types and many more and now, how it works regarding the parallel layout. In case of matrices, you, you have basically row layout and col column layout. In this case, you, for example, have uh, local numbers of rows 3, 3, and 2. And uh, local numbers of columns are 2, 4, and 2. But uh, the rank zero owns this portion, this whole portion of rows, and so on. The parallel layout of columns is in fact uh, the parallel layout of compatible X vector in matrix vector product. You can query the local sizes using matget local size the global sizes using get sizes and you can again get the ownership range of rows for example on the rank one you get here three and six and for columns you have mat get ownership range column for example in this case rank two has uh, column or ownership branch 6 to 8. And uh, when you have this uh, matrix layout, you can call mat get vex, get uh, new vectors x and y, which are automatically compatible with, with the A matrix. So you can then call this matrix vector product. How to assemble the matrix? You can again set all entries to zero and uh, individual elements using mat set value. And similarly to vectors, you can also set multiple entries of matrix at once using mat set values. But uh, be careful because it is in fact uh, two by two sub-block of the matrix, so you have four values in the value array. And again, like with vectors, the last argument can be insert values or add values, insert values to replace the values and add values to add the new values to the original ones. Again, matset values is purely local function with no inter-process communications. Uh, values are just locally cached and before using the vector 
you must again call assembly function pair to exchange the values between processors. This allows overlapping of communication and computation. But what is different with matrices is that uh, when you call matset values with, in, with insert values and then you want to call matset values with add values, you must uh, call assembly functions between. It suffices to use matflush assembly, which is cheaper, and uh, you use matfinal assembly in case you want uh, to use the matrix in the computation. When you have your final matrix called uh, the assembly functions, you can then uh, also get the values from the matrix using matget values or for instance matget row. Uh, matget values again uh, get a copy of the values. As I said, it is a logically two-dimensional local block uh, with global row indices ii and global column indices jj. And in this case, the value array will, be, will have uh, six entries. If you want to iterate over the rows of matrix, you can call matgetRow and matRistoRow pair. But unlike in case of vectors, here you can on only read the array walls, but don't alter it. And uh, here you can see some examples of basic matrix functions. For example, involving single matrix to uh, compute the norm of the matrix, you can call mat norm. Computations involving matrix and, and vector are uh, mainly mat matrix vector multiply. And computations involving matrices are uh, matrix matrix multiply depending on the position of the word transpose you use a in a transposed form or b in a transposed form okay and it's now time to see it in action so wait a moment in this example I will show you how to assemble a linear system coming from discretization of a simple 2D membrane problem. Again, I will compile and step through the source code. First of all, we must decide the, the dimensions of the problem. M and N mean uh, number of mesh points in x direction and y direction respectively. We will print them to the standard output. In this case we've got the default values 4 and 2. Now let's assemble a system matrix. The situation is quite analogous to vectors. We first call matcreate to create a new matrix object A. Set the local and global sizes with the local size computed automatically. And set the matrix properties from command line options. The default matrix type is for parallel case MPI AIJ, which stands for distributed sparse CRS format, and for sequential case SECU AIJ, which is sequential sparse CRS. Here is the first important difference between matrices and vectors. To have an efficient code, you should prolocate the sparsity pattern of the matrix to avoid reallocations during assembly. 
We can call prelocation routines for all matrix types our program is intended for. Only the one corresponding with the actual matrix type will take effect. In this case, we do prelocation for MPI AIJ and SECU AIJ types. Here we store the ownership range. In this loop we call matset values, realizing a simple 5-point stencil corresponding to our 2D membrane problem. Note we use the insert values mode, so these calls would replace the eventual original values with the new ones. We will skip the rest of the iteration. To finish the assembly phase we call math assembly begin and end. Now we can view the matrix. Here we call matgetvex to get the compatible left and right hand side vectors u and b. Just like in previous tutorial, u will be all ones. Finally, we will get the matrix vector product of a and u storing the result into the vector B. The rest of the code just deallocates the objects and finalizes Betsy. Okay, so thank you for your attention. Are there some questions? If it is not the case, we can proceed to part 5, KSP.